Boys back. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that's funny. What's up, Weezy? How you, brother? Pretty good, pretty good. What's going on? So, give me your winner and loser of the week, Doc. Winner and loser? Me? I'm, I'm, I'm a loser again this week. Okay. How was you a loser last week? Oh, man, last week was rough. Yeah, yeah, we, don't yeah. <laughs> we don't need a recap. We don't need a recap last week. Yeah, uh, this week, man, I had a headache this week. Yeah, for sure. And for the first time in my entire life. You had a migraine. I don't know what it was, but I, I took a BC powder. Yeah, my friend. Right up. Yeah, but I, it's just nasty as hell. It is I, nasty. I, I, I never take a BC powder again. Yeah, you got to do, do it with a soda. That might help. I took a regular BC powder. Yeah, regular little, BC. You yeah. got to be a real man. I would, I would, I would, I would to get a shot. I hate needles. You saw. Yeah. Um, that shit's nasty, that. though. It ain't that nasty. Yeah, it that shit's nasty, though. It's just fizzy water. Yeah, that ass, you probably just didn't take it the right way. Yeah, sure. did you let it How dissolve? How do you not take you it? Let it dissolve. You let it dissolve yeah. all the way? You, you took it You're like it was. You're supposed to take it while it's bubbling, you know what I'm saying? You can't let it dissolve all the way. Um, yeah, I didn't take it right then. I boom and try to. I drink the whole. I don't drink water. I drink too much water. That's nothing to brag about. I tell relax. you about that. Yes, <laughs> relax. Win or lose of the weekend. What you got, hey, man? Listen, I'm the loser too. Okay. Last your week, homeboys left you? Nah, 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 nah. Not this time. I left nah, my okay. homeboy, fuck. <laughs> but uh, last week, <laughs> I uh, I man came here talk crazy about Bam. Yeah. Bam came out who. Next night, it sure did. Man, I put the pressure on Tiger. I said, Tiger's back. <laughs> Tiger pulled out the damn tournament. He got his man, forget you. I look crazy after you last do. week. No, yeah. for sure. It's we crazy got... when you come week to week. It get a little, yeah, man. Get a little tricky. No, no more predictions. Nah, for sure. Uh-huh. I got something nah. to put on the board. Nah. Too, for for sure. you? No, nah, no, nah, I'm just saying it's an easier way because the cameraman got the board. Ooh. It's it's a, it's, it's yeah, a lot boy. going on. Yeah. So we got, I got a way to organize it for sure. All right, there That's we go. The for sure. Um, my loser of the week or winner is 2000s R&B guys. I was listening to some 2000s for your time, Cam. Relax. Uh, some Avant. My dog Avant. Oh, whoa, no. Say yeah, that before my time. Saying, That's a loser. Man, man it's, I don't know because he kicked off Separated. And he oh, said, man. every time I see you, I get, get a, a bad, bad vibe. vibe. Mm, but he couldn't stay mm, away though. Mm, yeah. Do yeah. you know how mad you got to be if you see a person every time you see him? They give you a bad vibe. Stay the hell away from that person for sure. Yeah, but he couldn't stay away. That's all one of the song. Now he said something between your thighs. That's what he's mad about. Can't imagine that. Yeah. Mm. Boy said, if I never see you again, I won't be mad at all. Mm, <laughs> he was out of mm, He was out there for sure. Mm, but yeah. No, that's that's, yeah, that's, that's yeah, but, for sure. but what about saying four minutes though? Now four minutes ain't really yeah you know, solid. Four minutes banging, you crazy. <laughs> nah, but separated, separated, separated bang, four we minutes. Kick the show off with if I listen, man. That's one of the best opening lines on R&B. I, see you, I yeah. get a bad vibe. Wait, just give me four minutes. That's what he said. You went into your Avon voice. Wait, you just give me four minutes. Sorry, yeah, <laughs> quiet storm. Let's get it going, man. Sport price. Yo, no layup line, no warm ups, no nothing. We just walking right into the stadium, get into the game. Let's do it. When the beat on, then it's on. When the white jerseys on the road, cause how we feel where we roam is our home. Leaving these other podcasts null and void. The show can't miss something like Tom Shepard and Corduroy's. Full sport press, you know them boys. Jay run the point, lock for three, and me, I crash the board. Weezy told you that it's paid for. We- Hard voice, right. man. Greetings and salutations. I would like to welcome everybody back and some of you for the first time to the full Sport Press Podcast, the premier sports podcast for the consummate sports fan. And this is your one-stop shop for all sports-related news and topics. I am Jay Hope. I'm Cam. Jeff is, Jeff is out on assignment. Shout out to Jeff. Wheezy. <laughs> what it do? What it do? What it do? How you doing, brother? I'm pretty good. Cameron, how you doing, brother? Okay. Rock, rock, rock. One more time. Oh, camera oh hell no! Nah. You can't just you can't just, you <laughs> so can't just no, add we, stuff on here. So live the host. Yeah. <laughs> oh no! Nah. Everybody get crazy when the lights come on around here. I don't know why we act stupid when the cameras roll. Huh? You, what, you the host? Okay, there it is. I got you in the grid. Uh, I the host. Lock ain't going for that shit. Lock ain't going to sign up on oh. that shit. You know, oh. Lock don't get a vote, huh? Hey, 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 first. Hey, 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 comes hey, hey, I can't go sign a lot. You know who that is. Hosted by FSB Cameraman. <laughs> Episode 419, man. We're handing out player comparisons for the lottery prospects <laughs> of the 2022. Lock your ass, dude. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> the 2022 NBA draft. 
FSP style. Always FSP style. <laughs> Better damn know it. Better damn believe it. Kick it off. Weezy. Best of the week. What you got, buddy? Best of week for me, man. I had some good customer service this week, man. Okay, that's what's up. Did you give a big tip? I did. I'm a, I'm a nice tipper. Yeah. I'm a nice tipper. Yeah. My mom was not a good tipper, but I got to teach my, my mom got to work out. You see, you think everybody, you talk, you tell me that I'm a bad tipper, and I'm not a bad tipper. I, you might not be a bad you, you're pretty, you, you're, you might be all right, but you're questionable. He, yeah, he's okay. I don't go, I go above and beyond. I've seen some of your tips. <laughs> That's <laughs> not true. That's not true. You ain't seen none of my tips. No way. Never <laughs> once in my life. Now, and if it's bad, yeah. you get the bare minimum. Yeah. And we've had some bad. Oh, yeah. What's, I had, what's bad? I had some. What's that minimum? Man, three dollars. Three dollars. God damn. <laughs> I'm saying, but I'm gonna spend. But you, you know, I'm gonna stop. What type about tip? Yeah. Tip is going too far, though. It's tipping been gone. Is nuts. It's tipping been gone too far. You tipping on stuff that you shouldn't be tipping on. Yeah, you shouldn't. Be, you shouldn't go to a game and order some French fries and they flip the, flip the screen around as you want to tip. You just grabbed it. I, I saw. You, I saw you just grab that French fry right yeah, there. Yeah. You tip on that? No, I don't. Okay. okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Acting like you. Like so that means your tipping yeah. average out though. Yeah, he acting like he tipped drill. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Come on now. Not tip drill. <laughs> <Pause. Pause. laughs> That's not boss. <pause. laughs> Best of the weekend. What you got? Hey man. Summertime. It's oh, here. You free. You're a free I'm man. Free man. Yeah, you know what I mean? You outside. I, I'm off work. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I am. I'm off work. Two months. Two months. Two months. See you Six in weeks. August. See you in August. See you in August. For yeah, sure. man. That's gotta crazy. Be a good feeling. For sure. That should great. be that should be all jobs. Nah. That's true. We should at least get three, four weeks for sure. Nah, that's not we that, need that. Nah, industries can't shut down for three, four weeks like that. That's true. They found out a way. Nah, they need nah. to find a way. I'm gonna be real, the, the two of y'all definitely not. Think about where y'all work at. <laughs> they shut down for a month. Shit, that'd be fine. All right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my best of the week is J. Cole, man. He made his Canadian oh basketball debut with the worst. Scarborough <laughs> shooting stars. Played 15 minutes on the floor, three points, one rebound, and one assist. Can't hate on this, man. Achieved his music career at a high level, and now he's trying to achieve some extra credit in something that he loves, which is basketball, for sure. So, yeah, shout out to J. Cole. Swing you back this way. Yeah. What's oh, your worst of the week, man? J. Cole. Okay. Continuing to get chances. Let's just be clear. <laughs> there are, and, I, and I'm not exaggerating, there are hundreds, if not thousands, of basketball players better than Jermaine Cole. Wow. Would you call yourself one of them? For sure. <laughs> No questions asked. <laughs> Killy's uh, gang, though. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, what I'm saying? Hey, but no, that's the I thing. Cole, Cole, feel free. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Nashville Pro Am. It'll be back this summer. Yeah. I, I will suit up if Jermaine Cole pull up. For sure. Yeah. Strapping. The whole night. He can't go left. Yeah, he, it's one way ticket. One way ticket, and that right, he ain't fast enough to get. Nah, come on, man. Yeah. Nah, for real. He got he got a real basic game, and the fact ain't that he fast. continues to get chances, like. Sure. Yeah. They're looking out. I mean, yeah, they're looking out for him. Sound for Wada. Sound for the name. It exposure because we wouldn't be talking about the uh, the Canadian basketball. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, so I, I think. He, he wouldn't be a, a best of the week right now. Yeah, he wouldn't. Scarborough wouldn't even be mentioned. Yeah. It has never been mentioned. It will never be mentioned again on FSP for one for J Cole. For sure. So it, shout out to Scarborough for getting Cole. mentioned, but J sure. Cole. Not it. You just trying to strap up for Jossie? Sure. Nah, man. Shit. Um, I'm just saying he ain't it. <laughs> we're we'll strap him though. <laughs> worst week for me was uh. Every girl, man, she got in trouble at school this week, man. Yeah, for sure. I ain't gonna mention what she did, but yeah. Now, Weezy, we, I told you in pre-production that when me and you talk, <laughs> it has to do with it. Though. It has a lot to do with you know. Weezy you gotta, yeah, now for sure, man. You gotta watch what you say. Yeah, but she ain't, <laughs> she better not be saying what I'm saying. She can't I, say I, that's, that's what I'm saying. But you cuss me out when I call you and talk to you on the phone, and you know I hear <laughs> harmony in the background. You know what I'm saying? It's good parenting, though. Yeah, it's good. you good. You're good. You're a good dad, though, for sure. Yeah. Some bad fathers out here in the world. Yeah, good dad. She got in trouble in school, though. It's sure. rough. My worst of the week is Walmart and their Juneteenth ice cream, uh, cheesecake, and red velvet. I'm Shout real, out to Coach Lock. I'm Coach, real flavor sound fire though. I'm gonna keep it. Nah, listen. I'm gonna keep it a band. Coach Lock used to make that at the crib. Yeah, nah. Flavor, <laughs> flavor combination Coach was Locke, on point. You, you Coach yeah, Locke he put a whole cheesecake in the. Uh, yeah, yeah. Nah, not for sure. Yeah, flavor combination was it. Milkshakes. Yeah, they really, they really, hey, they really owe my boy a couple of dollars. Nah, for real. Most definitely. Yeah. But anyway, when you hear backlash, that just lets you know people aren't in the rooms making decisions that are of the culture. Not for sure. If any black person was in that room, they would have been like. Ah. You know, leave like, hey. unless it's one of the black people still sleeping in the master suite. Mm. Unless it's one of them. Come on, man. Come on, Come on dog. We out here. Bro. You pie. But yeah, now nah, for sure. Come Go get that cream suit. malicious ice cream. You know what I'm saying? I've been trying to push that. Black owned ice cream company. Very good. Always sold out everywhere, but it's one of the best ice creams I've ever had for sure. There we go. Tone deaf, for sure. <laughs>
Uh, what Weezy like you want some of that Juneteenth out there? What's up? No, 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 no. Would you have got some? Be I right? want to try this black on ice cream. I want to oh, try okay. it. I thought I, it's fine. Yeah, yeah. I want to try it. Oh, yeah, yeah no, enough. Bring me, bring me some. I can got you. I know you can go get it. I can go get it. I know you can. It's at the house. I that I, that don't surprise right me. Now for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I want to try it. Now, two of these questions throughout the week at Full Sport Press. Don't forget to comment. Give us a thumbs up on the YouTube page, on the iTunes page. Please rate and subscribe. And more importantly, don't forget to tell a friend. To tell a friend. To tell a friend. That the revolution will be podcasted. And before we get started, the first half, Wheezy, you have a yellow box of Cheerios award recipient for the listeners. I do. This week's award recipient is Yankees third baseman, Josh Donaldson. It is, for sure. Josh Donaldson received a one-game suspension from the Major League base, uh, Baseball Program after referring to Chicago White Sox shortstop Tim Anderson as Jackie, end quote, during the game, referring to MLB pioneer Jackie Robinson. Now, White Sox catcher Yasmani Grandal confronted Donaldson during that contest, leading to both benches being cleared. No punches were thrown during the confrontation. Donaldson classified the situation as a, and I quote, misunderstanding. He said he respects Anderson and meant absolutely no disrespect with his comments. Donaldson doubled down and apologized to Rachel Robinson, Jackie's widow, for any distress the incident may have caused. You got another room, Josh. You got another room. We're coming up on Juneteenth. There's ice cream coming out with, with black flavors. You, bro, you got to know the room, dog. Yeah, just just watch us around us, man. Yeah, man. Uh, Come on, Josh. Any surroundings. Because where are you going with that? Yeah. What, what is a good response to you calling somebody Jackie? Fisticuffs. That's, I mean, that's it. Mary Fistman. Yeah, that's it. for real. Because yeah, it was know. just one that bad at you like Jackie did doing a problem. And Josh Donaldson was a pariah. I remember him being in the Twins Clubhouse. And they got his ass out of there. Let the White Sox do the same thing. Uh, I got Josh Donaldson ass out of there when I started. Drop him off at O Block. O Block and shit on the South Side. He made himself a target. The pitcher should be. Tagging him, he gonna have some bruises on him. I know for sure. You know, and right now he's suspended. He's suspended, yeah. and also he's on COVID restriction as well. Yeah, yeah. do wrong, what wrong though? Yeah, he need wrong to, folly. He need to go folly. Yeah, karma. You gonna take it to Josh? How let him? I go. Oh, cameraman, Cam- gonna take Cam- it. Cam- hey, cameraman, you doing a great job hosting, man. You dropping stuff off. I see you, boy. Damn, boy, boy, getting this check this yes, week sir. for sure. You guys ready to get started? The first half. Let's do it. Let's get it. It's your boy FSP Weezy. Join us each and every Monday on all streaming platforms. And don't forget, everything is paid for. The Revolution will be podcasted. Oh, shit. <laughs> First half, the hottest sports news of the past week, like we do each and every week here at the Full Sport Press Podcast. Before we get started, I am J-O. I'm Cam. It's your boy Weezy. What do you do? Weezy, where can they find you on social media, my brother? FSP underscore Weezy on IG. And I'm at How Weezy on Twitter. Holla at me. Holla at you, Cam. What about you, brother? I'm Cam. Two underscores I, two underscores am. That's it? That's it. That's all you got yeah. for the show. Hey, talk to me on Holla Twitter. Holla at you. Twitter. Twitter. On yeah, Twitter. On Twitter. So, and I'm Jay Hub on Instagram and Twitter. Let's talk on Twitter for show. Sure. Conversation on Instagram is not needed. Conversation nah, on nah. Yeah, just like, like some pics and keep it pushing. You don't, you don't, you don't want no conversation on, on IG? Nah, just just like, like and pictures and keep it pushing. Just like and roll. Yep. Yeah, now nah, we in and out. You Are you a big liker? Oh. I don't know. I, I'm a, I am. I ain't going to lie to you. I am. I be in them likes. Shit. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Nah. My like costs a little bit. You know what I mean? It's, it's, that ain't mine true. free and I <laughs> hand them out like it's <laughs> like money bag. What? That's <laughs> what they there for. Yeah, yeah for that. sure. You double posted tap, to get likes. I'm double tap or you go with the heart. Man, it just depends. <laughs> it's just a pen. Depending on what it is. Yeah, sometimes it'd be so ancient. Yeah. Shit, might triple tap that <laughs> if, if it looked good. I ain't. Hey, man, right, man. let's <laughs> kick off the first half with some NBA talk. Man, NBA teams and hopeful prospects assembled in Chicago last week for a packed six day schedule of events that included the NBA Draft Combine, the G League Elite Camp, and the NBA Draft Lottery, as well as the related scrimmages, agency pro days, interviews, drills, measurements athletic trainers, and much, much more. Let's go through the winners and losers of the 2022 NBA Draft Combine. We'll kick things off with you, Cam. Give me a winner. <sighs> Kenneth Lofton. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Big Kenneth Lofton. Big Kenneth Lofton, man. Mm. Listen, wasn't even invited to the Combine at first. Was not. You know, played well in the G League Combine, did enough to earn an invite to the NBA Combine. I don't think he hurt himself at all. Mm-hmm. I, I think – he was a uh, he was a second round pick. I think he solidified that he's a second round pick. Okay. 
uh, showed that he can kind of score outside, showed that he can use his size and strength against guys who are a little bit taller, mm -hmm. you know, maybe a little more athletic than him. Uh, and actually showed some, man, good foot speed, you know. Hey, saw a couple blow bys, which was uh, quite alarming on, on the defender's part, but yep. – Helped him a lot. Light on his feet like and every day. Sure. Th that stature of player is not completely foreign in the NBA right now. It's not. Grant I mean, Williams. Grant Williams. Big Baby was there. It's not completely foreign. Mm -hmm. Zion. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. That's his mold. For yeah, sure. sure. Um, my first winner is to Quavion Smith from NC State. No one expected Smith to even be a one-and-done player as he entered NC State. He finished with 17 points in the combine scrimmage and played so well, he did not even participate in anything else. Shot the lights out of his uh, shooting drills. Bones Highland is the name that you hear as his player comparison. And Mr. Smith, man, he put himself in the first round for sure, most definitely. Give me another winner. Weezy, what you got? Man, I got – I got. well, I had two winners. Kenner was one winner. Okay. But I, got, I got one more winner and one loser. Okay. One, my, my one winner is Scottie Pippen Jr. Okay. Scottie Pippen Jr., we got us one with him. Why? Because he signed with Clutch. He did sign with Clutch. And he also did great in the scrimmages. He did. Now, for sure. Yeah. He's, he can play, though. He can play. He can play. Sometimes I think he moves too slow for the NBA. I thought he moved too slow for the NBA, but and he was getting to the hoop at will. Sure. If, he don't, if he's open, he ain't going to miss. I got you. Give me a winner, Ken. Probably. Depends on where you go. Uh, I got Jalen Williams from Santa Clara. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Man, measurements look great. You know, 6'6", 7'2", wings, man. Uh, really shot the ball well. Shot it well in college as well. Uh, and then in the five on five, man, he looked great in transition, good off the bounce, uh, shot the ball really, really well. Again, I, I think that he might have played himself into a uh, top 25 pick. I got you. Uh, my next winner is Mark Williams from Duke. He measured in at seven two in shoes, seven six wingspan, and a nine foot nine standing reach, which is insane. Only Taco Fall has a uh, higher standing reach in the NBA. He will be one of the biggest players in the NBA once he's drafted. I think he slid himself into a top 20 pick for sure. Um, do I think that he'll be efficient in the NBA? No. But I think he made himself some money for sure this week at the combine. Most definitely. Any other winners, guys? Nope. Okay, for sure. Let's move right along to the losers. We will kick things off with you. What you got? My loser is the NBA on this combine. Okay. The NBA, like, I compare everything to the NFL because the NFL is great when it comes to marketing. This needs to be, I mean, when I was watching the NFL combine before it came on, I was watching guys walk into hotels. I was watching the training hotels mm -hmm. before. The, I didn't see none of that with the NBA. I didn't know this was on until a day before it was on. Mm -hmm. This needs to be, it needs to be marketed it more. It needs to be marketed more, for sure. And it's a good watch, too. It's a good watch. It is. That's, yeah. what, that's what the NBA is like. The, like, they made the, they, like, they created a combine. Yeah, they did, for sure. Pub it. They're not pushing it up. It was on NBA TV. Wasn't getting a lot of push, for sure. Yeah. I get that. I like that, Weezy. Give me a loser, Cam. Leonard Miller. Mm. Uh, Five-star prospect. He's still in high school, so he's one of those guys that uh, I believe reclassed, so He's got the chance to go into the draft if he wants to, but uh, after his performance, looked like he probably needs to either go to the G League or go to college. Hey. Uh, didn't really do well shooting the ball from the NBA line. Uh, didn't look like he was physically able to kind of handle his own out there. Uh, looks like he's at least a year away. So hey. I think, yeah, he kind of sure. hurt himself, especially with most people having not seen him prior to the combine. Hey. He was hiding in Canada. Sure. My first loser is Kenneth Lofton that you guys gave winners to because mm. he weighed in at 280 pounds. His playing weighs right around 260, 265, measured at 6665 like you guys mentioned. He had four months to prepare for this moment, and you came in out of shape. Clearly was out of shape, wasn't ready to play, and it has a lot to do with what Cam said. He wasn't even planning on even going to this. He was looking into his next year Louisiana Tech, and he's in the transfer portal. I think the best thing for Mr. Lofton to do is to go back to school whether that's transferring to another school or back to La Tech and kind of work on his conditioning and also just some small stuff as far as like getting in space and moving around a little bit. But he does move well, but your body is going to fail you after you continue to put yourself through rigorous stuff like that. Also, Kofi Cockburn weighed in at 293. Like, what the hell? Why are you waste what? Like, you guys prepare for this, dude. Like, you knew you were going to this combat. Even if you were going just to test, you knew you were going. Go in and make it look like you're ready to play, man. These guys – they were just out of shape. 293? You know how, dude, Boban weighed 293, 75. Hey, man. 
it, it's kind of hard to say anything about guys with weight when we continue to give Zion passes. So, man, at this point, we, I don't give him a pass. But I'm, is I'm Zion saying, an exception to the rule, though? See, that, you can't have you exceptions can't, to the rule. Sure, that's why he's injured. Like I can't have exceptions injured. to the rule. He can, yeah. to, he can go out there and get you 22, though, 25, maybe. He, he ain't played them, but what, and, 70 games yeah, in his entire They could be looking at these same guys and saying, man, at that way, they can just go get me yeah. however much. So that's, it's all about minutes and necessity in the league. Uh, as long as those guys can stay available, they do have skill sets that translate. But, I mean, if they're going to be injury prone and just like Zion, it won't matter. Most definitely. Give me another loser, Weezy. You had your one loser, yeah. right? What you got, Cam? Give me another loser. Ah, oh, man. I had Drew Timmy. Yeah, well, you knew he. Yeah. Nah, Drew Timmy had a chance. He had a chance. He had a chance. This was his chance. Yeah. We all knew that he wasn't going to test well athletically. But if he could have showed a little bit more stuff in space, showed more offensive firepower, because we know he's not going to be able to defend at the NBA level, he needed to really still be able to score right. the 18 to 20 points that he was getting when he mm-hmm. was at Gonzaga. And I don't think he showed that. Yeah. He, was, he was a senior, right? Yeah. Well, he was a 50th senior. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. He could have came back another year. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, sure. Probably should have. He probably should have won. He, well, he should have won last year. Yeah, he should have won last year. Last he's not going to get Corey Crisper was a lottery pick last year. Yeah, he should have won sure. last year. Yeah, for sure. He's trash. Yeah, he's better. Drew Tim was better than Corey. Better than him, for sure. Um, my last loser is Patrick Baldwin from Milwaukee. He was a top five recruit in the country before uh, choosing to go to Milwaukee to help his dad out. Instead of going to Duke, he goes to Milwaukee and had a nightmare freshman year playing in only 11 games due to a lingering ankle injury. He got his dad fired from the University of Milwaukee. Then you go to the combine to test, and you test terribly. Terrible athlete. He had the second worst agility time, and only had a 26-inch vertical, and he's 6'9", bro. Yes. So you better figure out a way that you can find yourself in the league. He needs to go back to school. He's not going to Milwaukee. He's in the transfer portal. He can't go into this draft because I don't see him getting drafted until maybe the second round. I don't think and he was a top five pick, dude. I don't think he's going back to school. <laughs> God bless him. It's, it's, it's too much pressure on him and the pro- program that he goes to to try to get him back into a lottery pick. I don't. I don't see anybody taking that on. We'll see for sure. Let's keep it in NBA, guys. The league announced its all NBA teams prior to game four of the Western Conference Finals. Tuesday's announcement signaled a generational all NBA shift as six of the 15 selections were first or second time selections. Now, the first team is compromised entirely of players younger than 28 years old for the first time since 1954. This marks the first season that uh, since 2011 that one of Steph Curry, CP3 or James Harden did not. Make all NBA first team. Wheezy, any snubs on this? From my from my point of view, it might not have been snubs, mm-hmm. but it should have been Steph Curry should have been higher than what he is. Yeah. Do you think missing those twelve games that he missed when Marcus Smart rolled his ankle, foot, that I think it jeopardized a lot for him because he was getting MVP talk then. Of course, he'd have been first team all NBA. Yeah, yeah. Y- 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 you're probably right. So twelve games, maybe, mm-hmm. but. The NBA, they need some marketing. I need a marketing meet. If they're going to announce this stuff in the playoffs, at least take the first round of play playoffs in consideration. No, nah, you can't do that. Well, could, could, just hear me out. Hear me out. If they took, if they took the first round of playoffs in consideration, yep. your boy wouldn't have won the MVP. Joel might have won the MVP. Well, no, nah, nah, well, nah, 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 that's, that's not true. That's not true. That's people that didn't even make the playoffs in the first and second, third team or playing but, games and stuff like that, so. Yeah, but we're looking at what we see now. So, yeah, I, that's just my point but, of view. But like Cam mentioned last week, I think it's a little bit prisoners of the moment. You know, yeah. it's a recency bias for sure. Oh, announce that! Announce that right before the playoffs start. Get I it over with. That. No, for sure. Any snubs, Cam? Uh, I don't know if it's a snub necessarily, but uh, I don't know if. Pascal Siakam over Jimmy Butler is questionable. That's questionable. Because there's sure. number one seed in the East. It's kind of hard to yeah. not have anybody. Yeah. And Nobody it, on first. And they're the first. They, dude, they're going to be in the finals. And, and, it could be. and he's the unquestioned leader of the yeah, team. It's kind of sure. weird. Yeah. yeah. I, I think that maybe. And I get that Pascal had a solid year, but. You got to put one. But, yeah. Yeah, yeah. you got to have one. Yeah. So, that would be it. Joel is. The major snuff for me because he should have been first team All NBA in this positionless basketball world that we live in, dude. There's no reason why you should have one center, one forward, whatever. How we got it? There should be simply three front court players and two guards. That's it. Back court players, and then it'll be a situation. It should have been 
Jokic, Embiid. Giannis, Giannis, Luka, Book, and Luka. That's it. Yeah, for sure. And they would have been fine. And then on top of that, no, nah, to no way. No, no fuck. They're the number nah. one team in the in the West, dog. There's no way Tatum goes in over Book. And if we're looking at the votes, it ain't even close. It's not even close. Book had 82 first play, first team votes. Tatum had 49. No, oh, that's it. Now what happened? See, last year Jason Tatum. Got his, if, if we look at total points, then the, the first five would have been Giannis, Luka, Jokic, Book, and Joel Embiid. Yeah, the same five we said. Sure. That was the five with the most votes, yeah. most points. And so, and then you got these writers and stuff messing up people's money because um, Book, not Book, Tatum missed out on $34 million last year because he wasn't on any first, second, or third team. And then this year he had already signed a contract. He's making first team. Trey Young makes second, third team, third, so third team like that. Now he gets the $34 million. You know what I'm saying? So Ja go yeah. get it. Ja get it. Yeah. So and but Donovan Mitchell, Jason Tatum missed out last year because, you know, sports writers and stuff like that. Three straight three that's just and then three straight years for Luca. Being first team. Luca Luca might not come off the first team for the next ten years. Man, he gotta play some defense. Though. Gotta play some defense. He gotta play some defense. That's if he, that's if he gonna take every shot. He gotta play some defense. Yeah, he got just a little bit. Just a little bit of defense. Luca. Nah, he deserved it. He deserved where he was at. Yeah, for sure. All right. Before you, we get go ahead. Well, you take uh, this is a question about for y'all. You know, Luca takes a lot of shots. Mm-hmm. You're taking Luca taking a lot of shots, or James Harden in his prime taking a lot of shots. James Harden in Houston taking a lot of shots. It's the same thing. Same game. Yeah. Nobody playing defense though. Same game. Okay. I don't yeah. think it. I don't think it changes anything. I think if you're a teammate, you got to play off of each of those guys the same way because it's dribble, dribble, dribble. If you're gonna get it, it's gonna be in the last six seconds of the shot clock, and you better be ready to put it up. The good thing is Luca though. He leads to give space where people can actually make a move and get to the rack. And Luca, yeah. Luca get tired, so yeah. Luca will kind of just stand and watch when Dan Witty and Brunson get going. Harden was not standing and watching when Russ or Chris Paul or whoever was his quote unquote sidekick at the time was rolling. Most definitely. Mm. All right, before we get started with halftime, let's move on to the NFL. The Shield is launching a brand new streaming service, NFL Plus, this July. In addition to live games, the app will likely include things such as podcasts and other team-related content. The league is expected to sell this service for roughly $5 per month. Weezy, this is your will. So, so, this work? yes. It, live games, it's like, it's like NFL Network. I mean, NFL, it's like, it's red zone. Yeah, no, no. Is it like more. Direct TV where I can get all this or just no, select? Not for five dollars a month. No, no, no. It's just say if you're a Titans it. fan, you'll log in and you'll have all Titans stuff. It'll be local broadcasts. You know, when you see people talking about the Titans and all of that stuff, it'll be geared towards your specific team. It'll be team specific for sure. It's like when you when you select the team on the Bleach Report, it's yeah. an app and you open it, it's got all your team stuff. You'll yeah. be able to look at all your team But stuff. say if you move to San Diego and you don't live in Nashville, don't get those now insights and to, stuff, you'll be able to have that. Watch the Titans. Yeah, watch the Titans, all of the stuff that you like with the Titans, all the you know behind the scenes. Oh, we see the rookie minicamp, stuff like that, and what people look like, stuff like that. Yeah, I'll probably buy it. Yeah. Damn it. Another five. Another subscription. Yes, man. Another five. Hey, man, listen to what I'm trying they to get say. Me. Dog, I'm you don't right. really realize we're probably paying more than what we actually pay for with cable because of these subs, man, the subscriptions. Nah, they yeah. add up. I did add just looked at getting cable today because I'm, I'm like, I got to get rid of these subscriptions. It's bro, too they many. add up. It's Especially when people don't YouTube, pay for them. YouTube TV is the one. <laughs> yeah, nah, listen. You might as well have cable. Same yeah, thing. YouTube TV is the same thing for sure. But this is online with MLB. They have MLB TV. Of course, NBA TV with League Pass and things of that nature. Now, the big thing is Sunday Ticket is up for sale. So, it's either Apple or Amazon. They're bidding to get that. You can see that they probably package in NFL Plus with that. And it's just, I'll tell you what, man. It's big business and a lot of this stuff. And God, I, hope Apple, I hope Amazon gets that. And a lot of moving. Ooh, yes. It's a lot, it's a lot of money. It's a lot, a lot of, money of money moving. A lot of money moving for sure. I'm excited, though, for sure. Excited for the 49 season this year. They say Trey Lance. Uh, it's looking great, you know. What I'm I ain't, I ain't hear that. Yeah, I did. I, you did. You did. I got that five. I on seen the way. Jimmy in the subway commercial. Yeah, I got that, that black lit. five on the way. You know what I'm saying? I got that black five on the way. <laughs> what about what look about Kaepernick? Might get signed by the Raiders. Yeah, no, for sure. I'll get that cap jersey. Raiders. I think, I think they're gonna sign him too for preseason. For, I mean, that'd be trash though, because he's never gonna play. He on the team for what? Yeah, that's that's. He need to go to the Vikings. He need to go to the Titans. That's what he need. Y'all need Kaepernick. My bad. My bad. <laughs> you guys ready to get started with halftime? Let's, go, Let's get it. <laughs> yeah. Check us out on Anchor. <laughs> 
iTunes, Facebook, Instagram, Google Play, Stitcher, Spotify, Beyond Pod, YouTube, and of course the SoundCloud page to catch up on the full archive of FSP. Just simply search for Sport Press Podcast. Yeah. Half time, we are back. We are cooking with Weezy again. Let's do it. Let's, Let's do it. Get it, Chef Weezy. This week we're gonna do. Uh, we're gonna go a little healthy this week. Okay. We're gonna go turkey burgers. Wait, twenty second time out. When was the last time you had a turkey burger? I had one this week. Oh, okay, that's I had one this week. Okay. Turkey burgers. On first on his mind. Yeah, yeah. 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 I had turkey burgers. Yeah. On a wheat bun. Okay. On a wheat bun. Wheat bun. You don't eat wheat buns. On a wheat bun. I'm saying what I had. Okay. All right. Well, here we go. Feta cheese and sp- <laughs> and what spinach infused? Oh, no, nah, hell no, nah. he lied. Hey, yeah, 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 man, yeah. Hey. Hey, you gotta be honest with you. Spinach is spin- once it's sauteed in something, you can't taste it. This is fake, healthy wheezy. You can't taste spinach. Then you're gonna say it here. I promise you can't taste spinach. That's yeah. how you can't taste it. You really can't, but you I, can't I, taste I've been it. trying to tell you that for years. None of it. <sighs> no, it, no, you didn't try to tell me that. Here we go, though. All right, so I sauteed a little, I sauteed a little spinach halfway. Uh, cool it down a little bit, put it in my turkey meat with a little feta cheese, and I season it up. What two seasons do is a is a is a go to? I say it every week. Onion powder, onion powder, you sure. and garlic powder. powder. Y'all don't listen. Yeah, yeah listen to my segment. Yeah, listen no, to my I, damn I, segment. I was gonna say uh, the ones you were talking about, not seasoned salt, but the other one. Yeah, that one. Whatever that one. Yeah, I'm telling you. What is that? Is that, is oh, like, oh, is it like onion powder, like, garlic powder? Yeah, 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 okay. Salt and pepper. Okay. Onion powder, garlic powder, salt and pepper, and I use a little. I ain't gonna get that out. Yeah, I ain't gonna get oh, that oh, out. Oh yeah, let's see yeah. the recipe right there. there yeah. We go. yeah, so I, oh, so I season that. Mm-hmm. Had out my turkey burgers. Turkey burgers, man. You gotta you gotta make sure they're right because you can drive turkey burger real quick. Yeah, for sure. Uh, you yeah, don't want to eat. You don't want to have drive drive turkey yeah, burger. I had some. That's terrible. So, <laughs> <next. For sure. laughs> I ain't gonna say because Mac Nine watch. Woo! Yeah, he sure Ooh. is. So yeah, I toasted my toasted my uh, my wheat bun mm-hmm. and uh. I put a little, I put a couple sweet potato fries in the air fryer. Yeah, that's a good meal. Do you do the crunch burger? You put it in between. No, nah, I went out way healthy. Yeah. I, I had, I did have pickles on it, pickles and mustard. Pickles and mustard. Mm-hmm. No onions. No, nah, yeah, I ain't go onions. onions. Oh, the right. onions. Sure. Now, I don't do lettuce. You, do you still eat lettuce? No, nah, you know I ain't, I ain't no damn lettuce. Yeah, ain't lettuce in years. Nah, it's over with. I don't eat lettuce. Right, Brussels sprouts. Because it's fake. No, nah, I don't eat Brussels. You don't eat lettuce because it's fake. Nah, I it's got water. food poison from lettuce. It's just water. Yeah, it's all it is. That's a good one, though, Weezy, for sure. Yes, sir. Turkey burger. Good old turkey burger, for sure. You guys ready to start the second half? Let's do it. Let's get it. Big Jeff for the Full Sport Press Podcast. And make sure you check out the Full Sport Press Podcast each and every Monday on iTunes, Facebook, Instagram, Google Play, Stitcher, Beyond Pod, Spotify, YouTube, and of course, the SoundCloud page. Just search Full Sport Press Podcast. And always remember, the camera's always on. Second half the 2022 NBA Draft Pro Player Comparisons. I am Jay Ho. I'm Cam. It's your boy Weezy. Weezy March Madness was loaded this year with projected 2022 NBA draft lottery picks and many closely resembled specific pros. Now, find the comparisons exercise used by many NBA teams to help them kind of paint an accurate description of how a player will fit and what its trajectory will look like in the future. So, in some cases, a blend of comparisons of multiple pros was used to describe the most or more unique prospects. We will go through the 14. 14 ish, 15 ish highest rated players in this year's draft that airs June the 20th, correct, guys? I believe so, yes. For sure. And we will kick things off. Who's our first person we have on the list, Weezy? Our first person is, my goodness, what is his name? <laughs> uh, <laughs> our first person is a Kansas shooting guard. He's a senior. Oche. Yeah. Oche. Oche. Mm-mm. Wait a minute. Agbaji. Oche. Agbaji. Hey, here we go. For sure. Goodness gracious. Yeah, for sure. Ken, what you got? Give me your NBA comparison for OJ. Uh, a current comparison players in the league right now. I think uh, he can kind of well, – a couple players. Kind of like a Desmond Bain, maybe a Buddy Hill. I think he's going to be a shooter. Uh, kind of provide some quick offense, spread the floor, play some good to decent defense. Yeah. Uh, don't think he's going to be a guy that you play through. Yep. Not like a primary score, secondary, third guy somewhere in there. Yeah, for sure. I have him more on the likes of Dorian and Finney Smith, high quality role player. Everyone on the roster can be can be like helpful with. Everybody can't be a star, you know. So right. there's a definite need for players that can create space 
for the stars and shoulder the defensive burden. I think Agbaji will be that guy. Got to continue to expand in his off the dribble game and also creation to break free, lining up from the three and D perspective to get past that. But Dorian Finney Smith, man, Oche Agbaji. All right, number two on the list, Pablo Blanchero. Palo. Palo Blanchero. Show. Duke, power forward, freshman. What you got, King? <sighs> Listen. <laughs> all right, all right, you waiting on that? Don't worry about it. Mm-hmm. See a lot of Chris Webber. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you like that, huh? Yeah, yeah you don't worry about it. You yeah, 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 yeah. Shit. Don't worry about that. It's all good, Real Chris Webber. Nah, I ain't he need to cheat. To. I ain't he need to cheat. Hey, uh, it's cool. He knew. Uh, he tried to cheat me. What you mean? He's one of the best power forwards that ever play. Uh, when it, yeah, Paolo, when it comes to quickness, being able to use some inside outside skill, uh, play with your back to the basket. Play in the mid post. Uh, he's kind of got a lot, like I said, a lot like Chris Webber. Uh, maybe even a little bit more explosive at this point. And I think he's a better passer right now. Yeah. But you can play that. through him. Yeah, you sick for that. No, no, listen. You can play through him the way that the Knicks played through Julius Randle last year. I think you can run a lot of offense through you him, a lot of high okay. posts, okay. things of that nature. I got, your, I got your number for sure. Um, I have a 2022 Chris Webber for sure. Point four, just like Webber all throughout his prime. Beast defenders in the post with a mix of power, footwork, and shot making. Strong, wider frame. Comfort level facing up in the midi. The best player in this draft. Low end, Julius Randle. High end, MVP. I have a question about him. Hall of Famer, Chris Webber. Is he a two-way player? No. I, I, I actually want to say that low end, I, I think I got a better one. Who's his low end? Tobias Harris. Oh no, 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 no. He The same play. numbers. He can go, he can go 19 and 9. He can do that. He can do that's that in his sleep. And that's, that's what, what I'm saying. saying. Low, and if he doesn't ever get better, he's yeah. 19 and 9. Okay. He twice. Yeah, you're right. sick for that. Hey, you sick for what you did, boy. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm you on your number. Yeah, yeah, no, I got you. Yeah, I'm and sure. Number three, yeah. player on this list, yeah. uh, shooting forward from Baylor, also a freshman. Kendall Brown. Yeah, I'm going first. Nah, he ain't never doing that. Yeah, yeah, not for sure. Yeah, 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 not for sure. I got it. He got me. Um, I have a great value, Keldon Johnson, top shelf athleticism, um, helping making a destructive force running in transition. He's going to be a transition player. They're both mostly value for their explosiveness, defensive quickness. If he can figure out a way to kind of build, just like Keldon Johnson has built on his game throughout the years, um, it's a good value pick for anybody that's getting Kendall Brown for sure. Uh, I got a great value, Miles Bridges. Okay. I think he's going to play a lot in transition. Uh, play some three, some small ball four. He really can't shoot it that well right now, but yeah. he is hell on wheels coming down. He'll let you. So, yeah, yeah I think he's going to be really good. Uh, maybe a dunk contest type guy early in his career, but yeah. yeah. He's going to struggle early in his career, for though, sure. Because sure, he can't create his own shot and he can't shoot that well, like Cam said. But 6'8 off the ball, man, he's going to defend both wing spots. He's going to be a special player, though, for sure. All right, number four on this list, super athletic guy, Johnny Davis, Wisconsin. Shooting goal. Super athletic. You got a game? I wouldn't go super athletic. I actually see him uh, as a guy who's not all that athletic. Mm-hmm. I think he's going to be more of a Caldwell Pope, Karis LeVert type guy, you know, mm-hmm. 3 and D, going to play some solid, play both wing spots. Uh, not really a guy you can play through on offense, but he's not going to hurt you either. Yeah, not for sure. I have more of a Desmond Bain type of guy right here. Uh, with Johnny Davis, similar physical tools, scoring styles, but they both can still beat defenses with strong drives and tough three-level shot making. The only thing with Desmond Bain, he's a little bit more polished than Johnny Davis for sure. Still flashes of shooting confidence, but he'll be a solid pro for sure. All right, number five on this list, Memphis center freshman, Jalen Dupree. Mm-mm, who? It's not Jalen Dupree. Jalen Dern, I'm sorry. How did I see that? <laughs> Jalen Dern. All right. Um, I have him as a six foot eleven inch Montrez Harrell that actually defends for sure. Trez is six seven. So he plays like he's six eleven, but he's only six seven. So six eleven, two fifty. He identifies and pretty much makes his money around being an athlete for sure. Now he'll make more money being a defensive stopper, kind of similar like DeAndre Jordan in his prime, but He's able to shut the uh, paint down. And also, people are saying that he's at on the high end, Bam at a bio. I don't see that because I don't think his game is as advanced as Bam's was when he first got to the NBA. Got to work with some skill level stuff. So, definitely mantra is Harold, though. We got young Dwight Howard. Ooh. Like Ooh, that no, that's a lot. I know, it's the truth. 
like you said, he's going to protect the rim. He's yeah. going to be somebody that uses his size, his physical nature to kind of do some things. Most of his stuff is going to come – his offense is going to come off of putbacks or lobs yeah. and things of that nature, so, which is exactly how Dwight Howard played yeah, up until he got to the Lakers. So he's going to work at a year? I don't know about all that. It depends on where it goes. But, I mean, even at that, Dwight Howard weren't working at a year because all the lobs, Jermaine Nelson just kept throwing it up or yeah. whomever. I don't know that he will get that type of – Magnitude of touches, yeah, maybe because I mean it just depends on where he is. Gotcha. But nah, I do think that his skill set and what he brings to the floor, yeah, young Dwight Howard. Okay, helps out. What we got next? Our number six on this list: Kentucky point guard slash shooting guard freshman Tata Washington yeah. Junior. Yeah. Uh, Tata. Uh, I got Tata as the young Jeff Teague man. Mm-hmm. Gonna be a solid starter. Yeah. I think he's going to be a solid starter. I don't think he's ever going to be a, a 23, 24 point mm-hmm. night guy. I think he's going to be 17 and 7, 19 and 6, somewhere around mm-hmm. there. But I think he's going to play winning basketball. Something, like I said, Jeff T with the Hawks, you know. Yeah. Hey, he had him rocking and rolling. All star. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I have Lonzo Ball, for sure. Well rounded, competitive six, on two. defense. Lonzo 6'6. Six, six. No, nah, what you're I'm right. saying. You're right, my bad. Go ahead. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, so he's an easy fit for any lineup when he's on an off ball skill, so he can play the two. Or he can play point. And his knock is that he's not a standout athlete. That's his only problem. Ty Ty is a great point guard. I would love to have him in Chicago. Uh, the fear about him is his ability to create enough separation due to a lack of athleticism. I think he compensates for a limited explosion with very, very versatile offensive game, floaters, touch, finishing craft, 6'3", 6'3", and 6'5", ain't too far away. 6'6", six, six and 6'2", six, are the 6'3", and 6'5". He measures 6'2". He measured this. What I mean, six three? He's a point guard. Yeah, you said Lonzo. Lonzo six six. Lonzo six five. Lonzo six five. Number, <laughs> number seven on this list. Use your Googles. Shit. Shit. You talking about two K? Is he six five on two K? Six six on two K. Nah, he not six. You want to bet that? You want to bet that? Betty six six on two K. Uh, bet that right now. I don't care nothing about that. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, for sure. Number seven on this list. <laughs> shoot, shoot, shooting for point four freshman AJ Griffin. Sure. Dude, it's on me. Oh, it's on you. Go ahead. Nah, go ahead. Uh, no, it's on you, Cam. Go ahead. Nah, nah. It don't matter for real. It do matter. Nah, for sure. Well, go, Jay. You uh, got it. I have Robert Covington, for sure. Still just 18 years old. Plenty of time and room to evolve, but a safe projection is a 3 and D wing. Make money off of three-point shooting. That's what he did at Duke. Stood in the corner. Shot threes, for sure. That's his signature strength. Rob operates as a better defender, but I think A.J. Griffin has the body that can develop into a great 3 and D guy. So, give me Robert Covington with A.J. Griffin. Uh, Jay Crowder. Same very game. similar. Yeah. yeah, very similar game. So yeah. AJ game. Griffin's a little bit more versatile as getting and slashing to the ring. And Rob ain't putting the ball on the floor. Yeah, and I think his body type's more Jay Crowder than Jeff Rob. Show. But He's yeah. a bigger guy, yeah. for sure. All right, number eight on this list. Mm. Chet Holgram. Yeah. And Zaga. You got it. I went first. Awesome. I went first. Uh I mean, I think Chet has a wide range of people he could develop into. In five years, check be Giannis. He also could be Porzingis. Nah, him and Giannis are two totally different players. He'll never put on the weight Giannis put on. We don't know that. That's yeah, what I, how? We Giannis see his body little? tape. Nobody, nobody was built like Chet Holmgren. So he, th- he's the first of the first. There's never That's been what a I said, Chet Holmgren. He could Holmgren. be. Yeah, we don't know. Yeah, that That's boy, he could yeah, be Giannis. Giannis he could be Porzingis. Bro. Like, we don't know. Giannis, Giannis is 260. Yeah. He could be Rudy Gobert. We don't know. Like, his game his game could go in a lot of different directions. If he develops some strength and can actually put the ball on the floor, gets a little bit more athletic and get past people, I still think he could dominate offensively. Uh, if not, then he could just be end up being a shot-blocking big man similar to – to Rudy Gobert, like I said, or he's Porzingis, a guy who has all the physical tools but never puts that shit together. I yeah. mean, it's just it, he really is an enigma. Yeah, we ain't never seen nobody like this. Mm-hmm. For sure, it's hard to even do a pro comparison. But if I was to go to somebody as close to him, I would say Evan Mobley or Kristaps Porzingis, like Cam mentioned. There's anybody that kind of checks the same boxes as Chet, shooting and defense plus ball handling. He can grab the ball and take it up the floor. For sure. But I saw Al Horford do the exact same thing, which was kind of weird for me last game too. But his passing and IQ is off the charts to be that tall. I think with KP though, him and uh, Chet Holmgren can play the four to five, but his defense is a lot more fluid, kind of similar to Evan Mobley because he can switch to the four and the five as well. So offenses, they're not going to likely run through um, Chet, but they can still make a significant impact with his shooting and off the dribble scoring. So, yeah, for sure. This is a, that was the toughest one for me to do. Mm-hmm. Chet Holmgren, for sure. 
Yeah, we'll see. Number nine. Yep. A shooting guard slash point guard from South uh from uh Purdue, sophomore, Jaden Ivy. Sure. Uh hard not to say recency bias, man. But he has a lot of John Morant style in this game. Fruit uh, right there is low. It's yeah. low hanging. Yeah, right for there. sure. I mean it's just it's right there. You ain't have to reach for that one. Yeah. I mean There you go. But, <laughs> yeah, it fell, it fell in my lap. You're right. Yeah, it right. fell in my lap. I'm feeling but that, I, it's kind of hard when I you see it. the way he yeah. plays. Like I said, man. You can tell they work out together. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can tell. Yeah, they, the bags are even the same, mm-hmm. man. Like that. It's it's kind of eerie watching the two of them play. That's so, right. yeah, I don't really know how we can go with anybody. He got bounced like, like Ja? Yes. Yeah, not for sure. He's stupid at play. Yeah. Depending on where he go, it don't matter where he go. No, that's not true. In that top five? No, I'm, no, that's not true. Because he, he's starting in Detroit. He's not starting in Oklahoma City. He's not starting. Josh Giddy didn't start. He's not starting with SGA or Josh Giddy next year. Is what I'm saying. Josh Giddy didn't start this year. Is what I'm saying. He did. No, he didn't. Yes, he did. No, he didn't. Bro, we he went, came off the bench. No, we went SGA, Giddy, Lou Dort. Tell me he didn't start. Literally, that was his reason why he didn't get the. Um, all rookie shit. First nah, team. Nah, he didn't start. Nah, that's why. That's what they said. La- last, week is cause, about that. last week is because you said Jalen Green. And he it. didn't play. He didn't start with Cade. Did he go to Pippen? No, nah, nah, he didn't start with Cade. Yeah. Cade to the two? Cade is a combo guard. He's like Luca. He can play one, two, or the three. So, my NBA comparison for Jay Nive is DeJounte Murray. Just like DeJounte Murray's game is quick, predicated off speed and explosion. He should quickly become, I think, one of the league's fastest in the end guards with the ball, for sure. But similar to Murray, he entered the league not known for passing, more for scoring guard, for sure. So he has to continue to make strides to make himself a little bit more available to evolve into more of a league guard than a combo guard. I think that's his hardest part. And he also has the same shooting mechanics as DeJounte Murray with kind of the shot put shooting style so you know DeJounte Murray could defend day one though like really really defend yeah I mean you don't think that not like that yeah, no. he has the ability to do that DeJounte Murray is just uh, there because he had to it's, defend it's different though well I got you now he had to defend because he wasn't gonna play for pop if he didn't he wasn't out there to defend DeJounte Murray might be the second best defensive guard in the league behind Drew Holiday Wait, uh, look mini the mid Look love, look love tough, look love, look love, look love playing eighteen minutes though. Dejounte playing thirty seven. Yeah, but look love tough in them eighteen. Yeah, no, for sure. <laughs> Number ten on this list, Ohio State point forward, you got power forward, power forward, yeah. power center, junior, mm-hmm. EJ Liddell. Sure. Uh, reach back a little bit for a comparison, man. Got a little Elton Brand in this game. Oof. A lot, bro. Little Elton Brand. A lot, brother. I'm just saying. Elton Brand with the boy. Nah, I said he has a little Elton Brand in his game. Uh, I didn't a, say a little bit. Did I say he was so a, out of the percentage of Elton Brand? I mean, a hundred. What's nah, listen. Is, we we just we just talked I'm about a lot of people, bro. dog. I'm like, come on, now. Nah, bro. I mean he he's a he's gonna be a <laughs> undersized for a man that's sure. not that athletic. Sure. He's gonna play a lot of under the rim. Yeah. Uh, he's not the defender, so you can't say nope. Draymond type of game. Nope. He, I mean. If we want to compare him to somebody right now, maybe PJ Washington, somebody yeah. like that. Like that he doesn't I don't think he does anything that jumps off the page, but I also think he's gonna be a solid player and maybe a yeah. consistent starter in the league. So I have EJ Liddell, very similar to what Cam mentioned, is uh Eric Pascal for sure, developed into a shooting threat, making it much easier for NBA scouts to envision him as a four in the league, not an explosive leaper, not a dynamic ball handler, but skill scorer. Passer from the post, average three point range, can block shots. EJ Liddell and the guy Eric Pascal. What happened to Eric Pascal? I mean, he's in Utah, but he's not getting any tick like he was getting in um, Golden State. It's kind of weird. Uh, I, just a bad spot for him. It should have been a great spot. Best friend, the best player on the team. Yeah, it's tough. Yeah, it's ugly. That's what they thought. We got Weezy. All right, number 11. Peter Dick. Matherin. Matherin. Just one of your boys, ain't it? Uh, yep. Yep. Arizona shooting guard. Oh yeah, you the one said he was a player. I did. What you got? Uh, there. Nah, it was a little strange. It wasn't. Nothing, no. It's cool. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Benedict Mathurin, man. After watching him for the last couple of years, yeah. Uh, very streaky. Can't really fill it up at times, but also can go to sleep on you for twenty minutes of the game. Yeah. Uh, reminds me a lot of J.R. Smith and Tim Hardaway Jr. 
six mm. six wing, you know. Like I said it can go and get you twenty if yeah. necessary, but you know, also has consistency issues. Yeah. I have old Ben as um Karis Levert with a little bit more athleticism for sure. Dangerous catch and shooter guy can use the um, one or two dribble pull up. That's his thing, for sure. Can stand to do a little bit more improving his overall creation and passing, become a little bit more versatile. Shoots him in threes too, just like the mother guy. Exactly. So right now he projects to be more of a complimentary scorer with some streakiness and an ability to catch fire. Don't see him being, you know, as good as Karis LeVert because Karis LeVert got an eighty million dollar contract, right? Mm-hmm. But I think he has all of the makings to be a really good, productive two ball. I, I got one more comparison for being mm-hmm. uh, Gary Trent Jr. I can see that. Yeah, for you know, sure. Because because I think Gary Trent is finding his way as a third, fourth option, yeah. but he's he still has a major role on the offense. Like mm-hmm. I said, you need his 17, 18 a night to win, and I think it'll be a similar situation. I got you. What we got, Weezy? All right, number 12 on this list, Keegan Murray, Iowa, point, <laughs> point. Power forward, sophomore. Um, I have Otto Porter Jr. <laughs> Boy, that's the same thing I had. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, the comparisons for him changing because his game is evolving, though. He improved from a 29% three-point shooter um, his freshman year, and he moved right up to 40 his sophomore year. What he does well is a combination of shot-making and a little bit of versatility as far as being a little bit more physical. So he just needs to work on shifting his face-up game, and that's what Otto Porter has been working on since he's been in the league, for sure. I, uh, yeah, I had Otto. Jeff Green. Jeff, yeah, yeah, it's a bunch Jeff of those Green. players. Yeah, for sure. He got to work on ways to go off the ball. He can work on that. I always look, but dude, that Golden State offense. It make, it make everybody look good. Dude makes everybody look great, dog. Man, Warriors in five. Who's that who? Draymond Green. Draymond Green. Wow. Point forward. Yeah, for sure. What I've been wanting to say all day. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, that's the key word, for sure. Who we got next? We's at. All right, number 13 on this list. This kind of man's guy. Jabari Smith, Auburn. Power forward, freshman. That's your guy. The sky's not the limit. No, it's not. I, I got this. He's gonna let you down. I got the sky being the limit too, man. Uh, things gonna be kind of like Chris Bosch. He's so, gonna let y'all down. So, so, no, no, no. That's the sky. That's so, the sky. Is he the best player in this draft? No. Chris Weber or Chris Who's Weber? Pablo I mean, or Pablo? Or, no. If Kevin Garnett, Kevin Garnett is worse than Chris Bosh's comparison, you tripping. What the hell you think is Chris Bosh was bad, but you said Kevin Garnett? Man, Kevin crap. Garnett, one of the top five power forwards of all time. All time. You got to leave that shit alone. Power forward. He's a power forward. Anyway, what's up, man? Yeah, Go ahead, like I said, man, Chris Bosh, he's going to be a guy that can, you can play through him kind of on the block, mid-post area. Also going to be able to play pick and pop, pick and roll stuff. Uh, I do think if he goes somewhere and is a go-to player immediately, say if the Orlando Magic get it, get him inside the, yeah. the offense room, I think he averages 18 to 20 a night year one, and I don't think it ever dips below that. Yeah. But he also is one of those guys that he floats quite a bit. And if he floats too much, hey, man, <laughs> you get ugly for him quick. I tell you, I've watched this kid, and I've seen him totally disappear in games as well, too. Me too. Um, so when I watched him, I just automatically saw Rashard Lewis. As I watched a little bit more, Rashard Lewis is an all-star. He's a $100 million. That's not true. He averaged 24 points a game a year, bro. You can't. Never mind. That's ridiculous. Um, that's ridiculous. But I think his defense is a lot better than Rashard Lewis was. So I would say more of Jaron Jackson Jr., one of a kind, unique mix of size and shooting. Looking at his film, I also saw a little bit of Michael Porter Jr., but Michael Porter Jr. is basically a two. And Jabari Smith is a little bit more midi into a situation where he can guard fours. Michael Porter Jr. ain't guard no fours or no fives for sure. So um, I just think that he has to work on figuring out his way to kind of put his game into mid-range because he took zero mid-range shots. It was all three points. He did not step inside the lines. No, he did not. And it was catch and shoot. It would be a pick and roll. He would catch and shoot it. He cannot play in the mid post. He can't play in the mid post. Richard Lewis cannot play in the mid post as well. So that's where it came from. <laughs> Number 14 on this list. What, what are you talking about? Yeah, now he's my guy. I mean, I'm saying that's all he did. Shot threes. That's all he do. All right, Number 14. Sheldon. Mm-mm. 
What's his name? Shaden. Shaden Sharp. Mm-hmm. Why you scream when you do that, bro? <laughs> you got it right. Shaden Sharp, Kentucky, shooting guard, freshman. The mystery man of the draft. Man, you damn right. Uh, I've heard everything from he is Brandon Roy to Vince Carter. Yeah, I, no, sure. I really have no idea. Who's Last in the I middle saw, between Brandon Roy and, and, and Vince Carter? Guess who's in the middle of that? I'm lost. J.R. Smith. Nah. Yes. That's, that's yep. not, that's not that's true. That's it. I'm, that, that, that's not true. Think that, about that. J.R. Smith's not in the middle of Brandon He's in Roy the middle of Brandon Roy and Vince Carter. Vince Carter's a Hall v- of Famer. And Brandon Roy was a several-time All-Star. J.R. Smith's not in the middle of those. No, what I'm saying is Brandon Roy never materialized to what he was supposed to be. How? He was an All-Star. What was he supposed to be? J.R. Smith. I'm asking what was Brandon Roy's sitting He's in supposed there? to be a Hall of Famer. He was the best player. Dude, Kobe Bryant literally was like, hey, that's my toughest matchup. Ron Artest, my toughest matchup. Dude, Brandon Rose is a dog. Yeah. He's, he's he got hurt. To, you say he's supposed to be a Hall of Famer. He's supposed to be a Hall of Famer. A hundred percent. You've never heard anybody say. I've heard millions of people say Brandon Roy is a Hall of Fame too. Br- Brandon Roy, Trace McGrady. t Mac. Okay. Yeah. But I have missed it's J.R. Smith. I think the part of his mystery, we haven't seen him defend. Anybody but high school players. And now when he was defending in high school, he was defending at a high level. But one would hope it would kind of work out similar to like Anthony Simons worked out for the Portland Trailblazers. I think he could be worth the wait if you kind of just take the chance on him. Just too much mystery. Van Skill said, ball handler, he can find daylight. But just don't know. The last time we seen him play was in high school. And I seen a lot of really good high school players that get to the NBA and they're not good for sure. You said you had oh you had a mix between Brandon Roy and BC for sure. Yeah. I mean yeah. even yeah. Uh, I think you wild. No. Yeah. Anybody else you, you guys want to you got Brandon Roy on the high on your list. If, dude, Brandon Roy's cold. Where you got him on your shooting guard list? He's not on the list. He he can't be on the list okay. because he only played six years. Uh, so he ain't so why are we talking about him so Because he's then? cold. Because Brandon Roy was dominant when he was playing. For two years is dominant. For two years. He played six years. He got hurt like a third year, right? Bro, hey, yeah, so you got to watch a little so, bit more so basketball. He, hey, nah, so listen. So listen, man. In, in the grand scheme of wings, Brandon Roy ain't that high. Yes, he is. I'm telling you, as far as potential, people bring oh, up Penny Hardaway, I, I, people bring up Grand Hill, and they bring up Brandon Roy. He, Those are the guys. Yeah, he third out them three. No, he's second. What? As far as what they did. No, Penny Hardaway potential? only had three years. You said potential, though. That's what you said. The potential, potential for Brandon Roy was a beast. I mean, I ain't saying that everybody needs to the share the same opinion. The potential for Ben McLemore was a beast, too. So, I mean, we can go through a list of people I'm that were two guards that supposed to be good. Xavier Henry was supposed to be the guy. Come what on, happened man. to him? Shit. Come on, dog. Yeah. What happened? Anybody else that you guys have a, a – that anybody wants to talk about that we didn't mention? Nope, because I ain't mentioning none of the G League guys. Yeah, G League guys are a little tough to kind of – we didn't put in Jaden Hardy right, because it's just kind of tough to see. Champ, yeah, both. Top 20. Yeah, it's kind of tough to evaluate those guys because we said they're already playing against pros. But we'll see. Jaden Harden's my guy. It's going to be good for sure. That's another one in the books, guys. Yes, sir. Who's your guy in this draft, Weezy? The Wisconsin guy. Johnny Davis. That's crazy. Johnny Davis. Don't put your hope in him, Weezy. That's not the guy that was super athletic on on Wisconsin's team? He's the only guy on Wisconsin's team. Weezy, who's the last good player from Wisconsin? Probably. You putting your faith in the wrong people? Probably so. Well, I I can go with Tata Washington too. You, you know who your guy was last people. year? Who's my guy last year? Uh, from UConn. <laughs> it was his guy. Yeah, it was. Who was this guy? The uh, guard. The guard for UConn. They didn't get the two guard. Played for Charlotte. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, book night. Yeah, book night. Book night. He didn't get it. I didn't well, see. He just, you know, it just never worked out. Never really, you know, ain't worked out yet. You know, what about the guy? Uh, I think it was your guy, your Jeff guy. Hmm. He got to play defense off night. Oh, he, killed. Mitchell. he killed. He killed. He killed this year? Yeah. He oh, played yeah. really good. He's the reason that they're going to get rid of De'Aaron Fox. No, they're not. Whatever you want to De'Aaron Fox averaged 29 after they traded Halliburton. They're not getting rid of him. They're going to get rid of him because he don't want to be there. You can't keep somebody that don't want to be there, dog. He don't know if he want to be there. He's got a new coach. <laughs> he don't want to be there. He ain't been there since the last two coaches. All right, guys, and that is another one Shit, in the he book. He might be Darren Williams co- killing coaches out there. <laughs> there was a lot of people to kill coaches. So you're a coach killer, Ken. 
Oh. Hey, he ain't lying. Yeah, not for sure. I did have four coaches in high school. Yeah. I played at two different colleges. Shit, I might be a coach killer. Most definitely. Yeah, for sure. Oh, you yeah. and Patrick Walwin. Patrick Bobber, man, getting these people. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> yeah, hey, sure. hey, Coachable, man. Hey, man, I might be. Yeah, hey, not for sure. my bad. Yeah, not for sure. Now, two these questions throughout the week at Full Sport Press. Don't forget to comment. Give us a thumbs up on the YouTube page, on the iTunes page. Please rate and subscribe. But more importantly, don't forget to tell a friend. Tell a friend. To tell a friend like Shane, happy birthday. Shout out to Shane, man. Yeah. yeah. Shout out to Shane. Shout out to Shane. Weezy. Everything paid for be baby. Can. Somebody sign me. For sure. Cameraman, the revolution will be podcasted. We are out. Thank you for listening to the Full Sport Press Podcast. To catch up on previous episodes, please check out the YouTube page and wherever you find your favorite podcast. Don't forget, tell a friend to tell a friend. The revolution will be podcasted.